great and wonderful things that you're doing in our lives. Father, we pray this morning that as your word goes forth, you will anoint my lips. Anoint my mind. Give me wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I don't take it lightly, Father, to stand before your people to deliver your word. And I pray this morning that you will think through my mind and speak through my lips. And to your precious name be all the glory and honor for the salvation, deliverance, rededication. The word that is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, will pierce the hearts of your people and bring us closer to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask that you anoint the hearers, that they will hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to ask a question this morning. And um, you could answer it if you like. It's not just rhetorical. Amen. I want to ask Has anyone in the house ever felt like giving up? Amen. Has anybody ever felt like just throwing in the towel? Yeah. I can't take this no more. Yeah. I, 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 anybody ever feel like just, just yeah. running away, just getting in your car yeah. and just trying yeah. and, 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 and just run out of gas or something? And wherever you stop, that's going to be like, anybody ever yeah. feel like that? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever feel like going to work and just cussing yeah. out yeah. you? Yeah. Did anybody ever feel like that? Anybody ever felt like going next door and tell your neighbor you bet not ever say another word to me? I've been trying to be saved, but since you don't want me to be anybody ever. Anybody ever got up in the morning and felt like telling everybody in your house, get the house? Anybody ever felt Thank y'all. Because I'm in the right place this morning. I'm not by myself. Amen. I want to thank y'all for that. I thought I may have been by myself. Amen. Amen. But God has a good word for us. Amen. Let's look in our Bibles to the book of Hebrews. We're going to be in Hebrews for a while this morning. And um, this was written by the Apostle Paul. I'm sure he felt like giving up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was beat, shipwrecked, snake bitten, yeah. in hunger and peril for the gospel's sake. Yeah. Now, now here's a man that was groomed to be the Pharisees among Pharisees. The boy spoke about 13 languages. Yeah. Knew the law up and down. Yeah. Was groomed from a boy to run Israel as a boy. When they would stone people, the magistrates would take off their coats and lay them as a boy, grooming him. That was a sign of respect and honor. As a boy, he had this on him. So that's who's writing this for. Because I'm sure he felt like that many a day. Amen. There's another young man that I'm sure he felt like that. Uh, this boy right here, if any of you all know who I'm talking about, you, you could um, talk to me. This is a church where you can talk. Amen. 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 And uh, this guy was a boy. He grew up in uh, Bethlehem. Anybody knew anybody grew up in Bethlehem? Yep. We're going to do like that game show. I'm going to give you a clue and can you figure it out? Mm -hmm. yeah. well, who do you know that grew up in Bethlehem? Jesus. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to go a little further. He had uh, eight brothers. Yeah, all right, all right. Look at that. I love it, man. I got some biblical scholars here. His father was a well-respected citizen in the community. His mother was a godly woman. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all getting close. Y'all getting close. He was the youngest son of all his brothers. David. 
Oh, y'all yeah, y'all getting close. Y'all getting close. Oh, I think I heard it back there. I think I heard it. Somebody said David. Oh, y'all show up. Y'all show up. That's exactly who I'm talking about. He was the keeper of his father's sheep. He was out in the field. He was a skilled musician. Because while he was out tending his father's sheep, he would play his heart. Ministering to God, he perfected his craft while working for his father. He had extraordinary talent. He was a warrior that had no fear because he knew that God was on his side. Okay. He communed with God on a daily basis, all day, every day. Commune with God. And see, when you commune with God, you will know that he's on your side. Amen. You have the testimony of what can man do to me when God is on my side. Yes, and when you go through a little something, you will have the testimony of, if it had not been the Lord, who was on my side. Yes, Lord. He was a great warrior. He was a great warrior. While a little boy tending his father's sheep, he says a lion came to grab one of the sheep. He grabbed the lion by his beard and smote him. Took the sheep out the lion's mouth. A great warrior. Yeah. The lion only prepared him for the bear. Because the bear came next. Yeah. He spoke the bear. The bear just prepared him for Goliath. Okay. Yeah. Nine foot tall giant. Defiling the armies of God. Yeah. Yeah. Men shaking in their boots. Yeah. He's tending sheep. His father tells him, go take your brother some lunch. They've been out on the battlefield. He goes to take his brother's lunch. His brothers ask him, what you doing here, little boy? You just came to see the battle. Well, I have news for you. There was no battle because all the men in Israel were scared as little sissy boys. This nine foot man defiling God every day, talking about their God, talking about them. I wish one of y'all would come out here to. Came to see what fight? Ain't no fight. All oh, y'all little suckers just trembling. David said, who is this that defiles the army of God? Amen. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Yes. Yes. Told him before the day is over, I'm going to have your head. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about my God. This day. Yes. And sure enough, before the day was over, he was carrying Goliath's head. Okay. In his hand. Yeah. Young boy. Trusted God. Yeah. Stood for God. You know the story. Some of y'all know the story. He went on and became king of Israel. Saul trip. You know what I'm saying? Like men. So God gave him the kingdom. Now he's the king of Israel. Now. He didn't ask for any of this. He was just taking lunch to his brothers. He didn't ask for any of this. But God's hand was on his life. And because God's hand was on his life, how many of y'all know the boy went through hell? Mm -hmm. He became king now. But as soon as he became king, well, before he became king, Saul wanted to kill him for, for doing what he was too scared to do. Yeah. Killing Goliath. Now Saul wants to kill David. He has to flee for his life. He didn't ask for any of this. Okay. David is fleeing for his life from Saul. Saul is pursuing him because now jealousy has caused Saul to become demon possessed. Yeah. So this demon spirit is just driving him to kill David 
because of his jealousy. Jealousy is crueler than the grave. Yeah. Oh, please don't be jealous. Yeah. Please don't be jealous. That's a terrible thing, baby. Jealous. They call it the green-eyed monster. Yeah, don't be jealous. But this jealousy drove Saul to insanity. Now he's pursuing David. David has a chance to kill him. Saul land up sleeping in a cave somewhere. David walks up to him, could have killed him, but he said, I will not touch God's anointing. Yeah. Even though God had left him, yeah. still would have killed him. Another occasion, Saul is in a cave taking him down. Satan mm -hmm. okay. so walks up behind him and cuts the end of his robe off. Just to let him know. Saul comes out the cave, David up on the hill saying, Saul, look at him. Oh, I'm not going to kill you. Got a respect for all of us. Didn't ask for any of this. Not only is he running for his life, but now God goes on and removes Saul, puts David as the king. And that was, you thought he had troubles before. You thought he had troubles before. He's king of Israel. One of his sons rebels and tries to take his kingdom. He wanted to kill his father and take his kingdom. Got an army together to take his father's kingdom. Yeah. He died. He got another son now that rapes David's daughter. I don't know how you deal with that. He didn't ask for any of this. Wow. I'm sure he felt like it. Yeah. He got a wife. He's praising God. His wife despises him. How dare you praise God like that? Come out of your clothes in front of them women. David told the baby, I ain't seen nothing yet. If you thought that was vile, you wait till the next time I praise God for doing great things in my life. Got a son's one to kill him, raping his daughter. Wife despises him. I'm sure he wanted to quit. Yes, He said, Well, baby, if I can't get honor from you, I'll get it from these hands. I guess because his wife wouldn't honor him, he sees Bathsheba. A married woman takes her to bed, commits adultery, and to cover it up, to cover it up, has her husband killed. Has her husband killed to cover up his sin. But guess what God said? David is a man after my own heart. Isn't that amazing? Amen. God compared all the kings to David. Every king in Israel and Judah that came up behind David was compared to his standard. They told, God told every king, you've done evil. In my sight, I'm removing you from kingship because you didn't serve like David did. I mean, you know, you were looking and didn't say, like, David was a murderer, adulteress. What are you talking about? What are you talking But see, one thing about David is he had a pure heart. You understand? Soon as he realized his sin, soon as he would come to himself, what he would do was repent to God. Amen. And God said, David is a man after my own heart. Amen. See, we all have seen yes. and come short of the glory of God. Yes. We've all blown it. We've all made mistakes. Yes. We've all come short of God's glory. Yes. But thank God for Jesus. Yes. Thank God for Jesus. Yes. Because no matter all what this man went through, 
He never quit. Yeah. He never gave up. Yeah. 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 He never threw in the towel. Yeah. Yeah. And God finally brought him to a place of rest. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's read the Bible. Hebrew, second chapter. 14 through 18. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Transition. We're not talking about David anymore. We're talking about somebody else. Amen. Let me see if y'all can figure that out. Keep reading, preacher. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Anybody figure out who we talking about yet? Jesus. Boy, y'all smart. Who y'all pastor? Oh, boy, y'all smart. Go ahead, preach it. And deliver them who, through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now, isn't that amazing? When you in sin, you know you're not living right. But you know God. Okay. Isn't that a terrible place? You're afraid to die because you know, Lord, if I die right now, you can sin. You understand? That, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, that, that, that's a scary place to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a scary place to be in. So what the word is saying right now is that uh, Jesus took care of all that. So we don't have to be scared to die anymore. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is getting ready to get good. Go ahead, preach it. And, and then he said, and he came as his brother. See, he didn't come in the form of an angel. Okay. He came in the form of us, flesh and blood. Okay. There's a reason. Keep reading, preach it. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make re reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now, see, he came just like us, born of a woman, grew up, went through temptations. He was tested in every area as we are, but without, but without sin. But he was tested in every area. So whatever test you're going through right now, Jesus went through it too. Amen. Keep reading, preaching. This is getting ready to get good, boy. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted, he is able to succour. Succour, that means take care of, help, help you out, rescue you. Amen. Them that are tempted. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. There is no temptation taking you for such that is common to man. Amen. And with every temptation, Amen. God will make a way. Amen. Of Amen. 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 Because, see, we serve not a high priest that hasn't been touched with the feelings of our way in front of us. He's felt everything we've gone through. Amen. And that's how he knows how to make that way of escape. Amen. Amen. Read the next one, preacher. Chapter 4, verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Hold on right there. Paul is saying, some of us get the word. Well, let me rephrase that. All of us get the word. But some of us, the word doesn't profit. And that's why people will accuse God and accuse Christians because they see other Christians well, that profess to be Christians, Amen. that the word is not profiting. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. They go to church yep. every Sunday. Every Sunday. They sit up in a service just like this one, hearing the word. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're hearing it. They sit up in the service just like this, the word going forth. Yeah. And they hear crickets. Come on, Pastor. They sitting there wondering, I wonder how much longer he's going to preach. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on. I wish you'd hurry up. 
We get the same word, but some of us is not profiting. And some of us, it is profiting. That's why I needed y'all this morning, because I wanted to know if this word has profited anybody in this ministry. And what I heard this morning, hey, glory to God, glory to God. What I heard this morning, glory to God, what I heard this morning. So we need to keep on running. Go ahead, preach it. Yeah. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Mm -hmm. Not being mixed with faith. Now here's another level to that. Some of us who hear the word, we'll listen to it. But we don't apply any faith to it. Because see, the word won't do anything for you until you do something. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, the James says it like this. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Because faith without works is what? That's amazing. You could kill faith. Faith without works. Faith without what? Works is what yeah. being alone. You have to apply some faith with some works with this faith. Amen. With this word in order to maintain and attain some rest. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah, we've almost through. Come on, preacher. Yeah. Hey. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now, now see, we've got to understand this rest. Because as we continue reading, we'll see that God says, don't look at days. I'm not talking about days. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God rested on the seventh day. So we look at Sunday as the day of rest. Yeah. That's not what he's talking about. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about having a confident assurance that no matter what I'm going through, because I hear the word, because I apply some faith with it, because I put some works in it, I know I'm not doubting, I'm not guessing, I'm not wondering. I know without a shadow of a doubt that all things work together for my good because I love the Lord. Trust in his holy name. That's the rest he's talking about. I'm not guessing. Knowing this, that the trying of my faith worketh patience. And once patience has her perfect work, I will be what? Complete, entire, wanting nothing, no lack in my life. Because I got this rest. I got this confident assurance that God is on my side. And what can man do to me when God is on my side? Yes, Lord Jesus. Come on, people. Let's wrap this thing up. Come on, let's go and wrap this thing up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Did you finish two? Yes. Go to 11 right quick. We're trying to stay calm. Go to 11. Verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Let us labor. Let's put in some work to enter that rest. Salvation is free, but rest won't cost you. Salvation is free, but the anointing's going to cost you. Salvation is free. You understand? Deliverance going to cost you. Salvation is free, but your inheritance is going to cost you. Salvation is free, but we got to do a little something, something. You understand? Because we have to put in a little work. Faith without works is what? Being alone. And see, that's the difference between those that come to church, hear the word, and don't do anything. Hey, we're going to take the stigma off of God. It ain't God's fault. It ain't God's fault. No, no, no. It ain't God's fault. 
It's our fault. Amen. 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 Hey, I think, come on, let's read this next one. I'm almost finished. Come on, I'm going to show you. I can, I can show you better than I tell you. Go ahead and read that next one. Chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget the iniquity of his children. He's not unrighteous to forget your what? Word. Word. And what? Word. 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 Keep reading, preacher. Which you have shewed towards his name. Which you have shown towards his name. Mm -hmm. What you do for Christ. Yes. The love you show for other yes. people. Yes. The faith you determine. Yes. Getting up out the bed. Yes. Coming to church. Because the Bible yes. says, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Yes. But do it the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Yes. See, we're supposed to come together and encourage each other and exhort each other and build each other. Amen. See, there's people that come to church looking for lead. If they don't see lead, they can get discouraged. There's people that come to church looking for novice. They don't see Mavi, they can get discouraged. Well, if she didn't come, maybe I don't have to come. You understand? When the Hawkins family, every time I see them come, I'm encouraged. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, don't forsake the assembly. Come the morning. Yeah. 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 But there's a reason we don't. Yeah. Read, preacher. Yeah. And that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance. How many of us? Just leadership. No. No. Everyone. 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 Just the minister. Everyone. Everyone. Read that part again. Everyone. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Same diligence. To the full assurance of hope unto the end. That ye be not slothful. That means lazy. <laughs> but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Inherit the promise. Ah. Amen. That's how you inherit the promises. Yes. You will not inherit the promises being lazy. Okay. Making excuses. Because okay. yes. yes. see that's how the devil play you. Yes. You'll get up every morning Monday through Friday to get to work at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. Yes. Yes. Sunday morning that devil said, don't get up. Amen. Lay in the bed a little longer. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Well, you know, I go to school. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I worked all week. Yeah, hey, you may got pimped all week, but God got something for you. Uh -huh. yeah, God got something for you. You see how long that job is. Yeah. Well, and I got something for you now. And those of you that's going to school, you know, I'm in school, so I can't serve God because I'm in school. Well, guess what? You're going to need God after you finish school because they ain't just giving out jobs because you work in school. Well, you know, they ain't just giving out jobs after that. There's a whole bunch of folks got degrees and broke his jokes that are like in the county building. Do you know what laying up in the bed does to you? 
Let me tell you what laying up in the bed does. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. When you lay up in the bed all day, you co-sign in the devil. Yes. Yeah. The devil tell you, you sit, this hurt. Yeah. Yeah. So you lay up in the bed all day. Yeah. And you know what happens? You just get sicker yeah. and sicker yeah. and sicker. Yeah. Okay. If you were to get your butt up out the bed, oh, when the yeah. devil put that on you, yeah. and go jogging or something, yeah. you understand, or go work out or something, yeah. you might sweat all that crap we're watching. Let me give you some life with this word in a minute. Come on, go ahead, preacher. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth into his flesh, he that soweth to his flesh, let the flesh run you. Shall the, the devil tell you, oh, don't get up, you can lay in the bed a little while longer. You understand? Yeah, don't, don't get up, Put, push the snooze button uh, three more times. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Damn, Come on. Lazy. Yes. Slowful. Yes. 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 Out of shape. Yes. Tired. Yes. Weak. Yes. The bed got all the strength. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Teach out. Come on. Come on. Yes. Go ahead, preacher. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Corruption. Let me tell you something like that. When I was working on my secular job and pastoring and doing businesses and buying properties and raising a family and doing community outreach and and a whole bunch of other stuff. Amen. I was getting up about six every morning. But this is what would happen. I'm working right doing all this here. And the weekends would be hellacious for some reason. On the weekends, stuff be aching, getting crooks in my back and in my neck, just, just fell all out of joint. Well, I did a little research. And this is what I found out. They, scientists say you have a biological clock inside of you. What that means, if you do get up at a certain time for so long, you don't need a long clock. You're going to wake up automatically. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you have a biological clock that wakes you up. Yeah. What would happen to me on Saturdays, you know, I'm supposed to rest because I got church Sunday. So I'm going to make Saturday my Sabbath where I lay in the bed a little while longer. That's all. You know what I'm saying? So I wake up at 6, body ready to get up. But my mind says, you know, go and get you some rest. So I lay in the bed. Another hour or two, whatever. Then I get up. I get up. This hurting, that hurting, yeah, yeah. aching, yeah. and carrying on. And then I determined, then I learned through the research that when your body, when your body is used to being awake and moving at a certain time, yeah. and you lay in the bed yeah. longer than that, yeah. yeah. your yeah. muscles start doing crazy things. Yeah. 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 Your muscles start doing crazy things. Yeah. So I said, well, let me try this here. Uh -huh. So instead of laying in the bed till about eight or nine on Saturdays, I started getting up at six. Amen. And I didn't have him make some man. Amen. And, and, and because I started, I don't know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Go on, please, go on. Finish reading. Finish reading. Got to finish this up. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And let us not be weary in well doing. Don't be weary in doing well. Amen. For in due season yes. we shall reap yes. if we faint not. Amen. For in due season. Here's the clincher. In due season. You know what due season means? Yeah. That means your own. The word due means your own. Oh, what I'm saying, saints of God, is everybody gets a season. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets a season. Everybody gets your own season. You have your own season. The word season means your appointed time. There's a time that God will open the windows and pour you out that blessing. There's a time when you're supposed to be in a certain place because your due season is right here. But if you're laying in the bed, if you're too lazy to get up, you miss your season. And that's what's wrong with most people. They are missing their season. Season laying 
coming to me. You miss your season not coming to church. You miss your season not getting up on the work. You miss your season. And then we want to blame God because we were too lazy to get up on the work. blame God when he had your due season. He said, right here, right now, is what I want to bless you. But you let the devil trick you. He made you stay in the bed. And you missed your season. You missed your due season. That was especially made for you. God is not a respective person. He don't love me more than he loves you. He don't love Isaac more than he loves you. God loves us all the same. He's no respect to person. But when you hear his voice, when you where you're supposed to be, when you hear his word, combining it with faith, combining it with work, you will reach the promises he has for you. You got to be at the right place at the right time. God allowed me to go through that. He allowed me to go through that so I could do this research. Yeah. So then I started getting up at 6 on Saturdays. Okay. One Saturday, got up, yeah, have you seen? One Saturday, I got up at 6 o'clock. Yeah. I got up at 6, and so I'm praying. Yeah. Just like it was a Monday, or a Friday, or a Wednesday. Yeah. I'm not going to give my job more of my day than I give myself. Yeah. I'm not going to sleep my life away on my off day and get up and work like a dog all week. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to seek the Lord early. And the Lord told me to go out and get the paper. I got the paper, open it up, and saw this property. Talking about two seasons. Your proper time. Two seasons, baby. I saw this property. We were already in a lease on another property. That looked like a doghouse compared to this one. We were already in a lease. Already gave 8000 on it. But God said, go look at this property. I said, baby, look at this property, would you? Look at this property. She said, she looked at it. I said, let's go see it. She said, I don't want to go see that. I said, why not? She said, because I know I'm going to want it. If we in this one, I don't want to go see it. I said, baby, let's just go see. Let's just go see. Let's see what's happening. You don't know what God might do. To make a long story short, to see what God has done.